My name is Catherine, and I am here today to tell you a little bit about my instrument, the bassoon. It's kind of big, I'll show you the whole thing in a second. Um, but before that, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So like I said, my name is Catherine. I am 22 years old, and I am studying music composition and conducting at Berkeley. I am in my final year there, and I graduate next year. Um, I've been in music since I was in the fourth grade, so I was nine years old, um, and I actually didn't start off on the bassoon. I started off on the saxophone, um, and I really loved playing the saxophone, and then two years later, when I was 11, my band director came to me and was like, would you like to try this? You seem passionate, you seem like you like this. And I was like, yeah, I'll try it. And I fell in love with it. And I have now been playing the bassoon for 11 years. Um, so I really love playing it. It's a really weird instrument, which I really like. It's not very common. A lot of people don't really know what the bassoon is, um, but then there are people who know it and they also love it. Um, there are always so many great lines and so many great melodies written on the bassoon. So first things first, I want to show you this whole instrument. Now it's pretty big, it's really long, so I'm going to have to move out of the frame a little bit so you can see it. But this is the bassoon. This is the front side. This is the back side. So a lot of keys, a lot of things going on. And as you can see, it's really, really, really long. It's really big. It's about half of my height. Um, so it can kind of be, you know, I have to carry it around for sure, but it's really cool because it breaks down into smaller pieces that are a lot easier to carry. So just to show you all of them. You have, this is the whole body of the instrument. And then you can see as I start taking them off, it becomes significantly smaller. So there's one piece and then I have another piece here. And now we're left with this and then I can take this piece off. And so now I have four pieces of instrument that are so much smaller than that huge monstrosity when it's put together. Um, so to show you what the different parts look like, this is the boot of the instrument. We call it the boot. And this is where my right hand goes. So when I'm playing, my right hand stays here. Then it works all these thumb keys in the back. And so it'll stay here. And then on the bottom, you see these really, really tiny holes. Now this is where my thing called the seat strap goes. So this is a seat strap and I sit on this and then the instrument hangs off the side of the chair and it's attached with this right here. And so when I'm sitting, this will be, I'll be sitting on this part and then it hangs off the chair and then I can bring the instrument up to my mouth when it's fully put together. Um, so this is the boot. And then next we have the wing joint, which is where one of my, this is part of the, where my left hand goes whenever I'm playing. So fit that in right here. And then this is the wing joint, which is a little bit bigger, but not as many keys on it. And that goes right next to it. You see, they're like best friends, all snugged up. And then we have, last but not least, the tip of the iceberg. This is the bell of the instrument, which is where, this actually is not where the sound comes out. Most people think that, but this isn't where the sound comes out, but it's, you know, the whole to the larger part of the instrument. This one little key, we'll put that on right there. And then we have the full body of the bassoon. And so, I'll sit it right here. And now we have a few other smaller but very important pieces. This is called a vocal and it sits right here. And this is the equivalent to a mouthpiece. Um, so that goes in right there. And then last but not least, we have this little guy and this is the reed and so it is a double reed instrument so it lives in the same family as the oboe 
and that's they're called that because these reeds are two pieces of wood they're two really small pieces of wood that are stuck together now a uh, oboe reed looks significantly smaller than this this is really big compared to an oboe reed but it's a really big instrument so it needs all of that and so this is where all of the sound comes out this is where this is the first place that we put air through and then it goes through this entire instrument so before we get into more of that i want to play you a little bit of it so you can hear what it sounds like a little star for you there so that's what the bassoon sounds like and has a really interesting sound there's really not an instrument in the orchestra that that can mimic the sound at all um, like you know brass instruments they all sound very brassy they have different sounds they have different timbres but they sound like brass instruments this is it sounds a little funky you know but that is really cool because then we get a lot of really interesting lines. A lot of people like to use the bassoon for really quirky things or really sneaky or also really comical. It can be a very funny instrument. I mean, even when you look at it, it looks funny. So I love playing the bassoon. I love playing the 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 comedian of the instrument, of the orchestra, if you will. Um, yeah, so that's the bassoon. Now, in order to make sound, so how did I do that? So, like I said, this is the first stop for all sound production when it comes to the bassoon. And so the way that I do this is I have to have a really good embouchure. Now, the embouchure is how is your mouth shaped around your reed or your mouthpiece if you're a saxophonist or a clarinetist. For us, we just have the reed. So. The embouchure for a bassoon player, we roll our bottom lip in like this to have like a little palate on our, so we're not biting the reed because you don't want to do that. That'll, we don't want to eat it, you know? We just want to have a nice soft palate for it to sit on like that. So you do that. And then I'm going to curl my top lip over my top teeth like this. And then I have to squeeze the corners in of my mouth really, really tight so that no air gets out. Because you can see that hole is so, 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 so small. And we have to make sure all the air that I have goes through this hole. So you have to make sure that that's really tight. And then when you make a sound on it, it sounds like this. <coughs> kind of funny, right? <laughs> It's definitely not the same as when it's in the full instrument. And a really cool thing with reeds is that you can change the tamper based on the way that your mouth is shaped, based off of your embouchure, or based off of how much air you're using. So even with this, I could play a little song for you. That one was a little rough. But I think you get the idea. I can do a lot of things. This is very flexible and I can create a lot of sounds on it. And so then our next, our next line of defense is the vocal. And so this doesn't really do too much special. It just serves as a way for air to continue to go through the instrument. But there is this really cool little hole on the side of it. And that attaches right here on what we call the whisper key. And it serves as sort of an octave key so that I can change, so I can play in different registers. And that's all just by this little hole right there, which I think is really cool. And so when you play it just with the vocal, it sounds like this. So sounding a little bit more like the bassoon, but still, you know, not the full thing. And so then when we put it in this guy, we get the full fledged. Really cool. Now, some of 
something that's really interesting about the bassoon is that it has a really really big range so the range of the instrument is what is the note lowest note you can play and then what is the highest note you can play and so the bassoon has a very very big range compared to a lot of other instruments uh particularly woodwind instruments in the orchestra so the lowest note i can play is all the way down here And then the highest note I can play is all the way up here. So you see those are two, they are very, very far apart. And they have two completely different sounds. One is really low, kind of sounds like a foghorn, very heavy. And then the other one has a lighter sound, but it's also very rich and full. And so because of that, a lot of people like to use the bassoon for really low stompy melodies maybe or bass lines and then some people like to use it for really high singing melodies so it has a lot of different things that it can do in the orchestra which I really enjoy and I think is a really cool part about playing the bassoon. So when it comes to making music as a bassoonist, there's a lot of different things that we have to pay attention to that makes a note sound the way it's supposed to sound. So one of those things is dynamics. Dynamics are so, so, so important for anybody in the orchestra. They're really important for us because a lot of the times we don't have the melody or a lot of the times we'll have counter melodies, which is like the melody, but a supporting part of the melody or we're just not playing at all, the melody at all. We're just playing supporting parts. And so because of that, we wanna make sure that we're not playing so loud that it overpowers the melody, which is usually the most important part of the music. So in order to control our dynamics, we really have to pay attention to our embouchure. So there that is coming up again, the way that our mouth is controlling the air that we are using to play the notes. So I can play some notes really loud, I can play them really soft, and all of that control has to do with my embouchure. So just to give you an example of how this happens. That was really, really loud, right? Now I'm gonna play that same note, but I'm gonna play it so, 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 so soft, really soft. So those are two different ways of playing the same note. And both of those are really challenging actually, because you have to make sure that you have the correct control so that the note comes out right. So when I play it really loud, I have to control my air to make sure that I don't overblow the note and it cracks. And I also have to make sure that I'm keeping the note in tune. And that means that the note is just sitting at the right place, that it's not sounding a little too high or a little too low, but it's just right for where it needs to be. So I have to use my embouchure to do that. And it's the same when I'm playing a note that's really, really, really soft. I have to use my embouchure to control the note and to control my airflow and to control the intonation. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things that are going on in your head when you're playing one note and that's just dynamics. There are so many other facets of music and expressions that you have to pay attention to as a musician. Another thing that's really important is articulation. So articulation is how are you playing the note? Are you playing it short? Are you playing it really, really long? Are you playing it accented? Are you playing it with a force? How are you playing it? What is the attack of the note? That is what an articulation is. And the same as dynamics, it requires a lot of control coming from the embouchure. So to give you some examples of the different ways I can play it in the note, here's something really, really long. That was called a tenuto, where it's long and the attack is barely noticeable. Similar to a tenuto is a legato. Now the difference between a tenuto and a legato is that a legato, I don't 
re-articulate the note at all. So I don't tongue every note. So instead of doing ta, 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 I just do ta. Very subtle difference, but they are important. And then there's a staccato, which is really short. This is what staccato sounds like. And then you have accents like marcados, and that means to put weight behind them like this. And then you can have combinations of all of those. So those also require an enormous amount of control, but they can also be really cool because they can make the music have really fun sounds. It can give it its character. There's one particular excerpt that I like a lot for the bassoon that's very famous. It's from a classical piece of music by Edward Grieg, and it shows off the staccato articulation, and it does a really good job of using that, that to set the tone for the piece. So I'll play that for you right now. <laughs> So I just played In the Hall of the Mountain King for you guys. And in that last piece, you can see that I was using a staccato articulation. So it was short, but I was also using a really soft dynamic level. And in music, we call that soft dynamic level piano. And we call a loud dynamic level forte. And so you can see how the combination of a dynamic level and an articulation can create a character, it can create a mood, it can create a story. And so when you combine dynamics and articulations in different ways, you can make music sound other ways. I think that that is a really great example of how something really soft and short can sound sneaky, like a little mouse sneaking around the house you know it's very it's very it's soft it's quiet it's mysterious and so i'm gonna play another piece for you guys that uses a different set of dynamics and articulations and has a completely different character to it um you might know this piece you probably have heard it in some movies before so i hope you guys enjoy <laughs> So the last piece that I just played for you guys was called When You Wish Upon a Star. And that's a song that's made really famous because it is the intro song for all of the Disney movies. So when you see like the blue landscape and you have the castle with the shooting star, that's the song that plays. Um, and in that you can see how when you use legato and tenuto articulations along with a variety of dynamics, I started really soft and then the second time I went through I got really loud um, to create some emotional impact to put some feeling into it so you can see how the bassoon can also be used as a really great melodic instrument for really pretty lines um, I think that it has a very close sound to a voice to a human voice and I think that that's can be really pretty and a lot of composers have used it as such um, and that's why it's why I love playing it um, 
So when it comes to the bassoon, the bassoon is an instrument that is primarily used in orchestra. It is a woodwind, so it lives in the same family as the flute, the clarinet, and the oboe. So they kind of, in the orchestra, they all sit in a little group right behind the violas, um, the string section, and you just kind of sit right there in the middle, right in front of the conductor, and you know, we just do our thing. Um, and I love playing the bassoon in the orchestra. I think it is great, but I also have played in wind ensemble or in band, might be another way that you know it. And essentially what that is, is an ensemble with no string instruments. So they are all wind instruments. So that means that you require wind to play them. So that includes woodwinds, but also brass instruments. Um, and there's also percussion instruments, so instruments that you hit in the wind ensemble. And I think it also has a great spot there. It's really great at creating color um, and wind ensembles are great in creating a lot of different sounds with wind instruments. Um, it's not a very common instrument that you see in popular music. So when you're listening you know, to your favorite song on the radio, you probably won't hear a bassoon just because it's usually not put there. Um, it's not used in a lot of jazz either, but that doesn't mean that it does not exist. I have played in some R&B ensembles before and it's been really cool to see what you can do with a bassoon there. There are also a lot of phenomenal jazz bassoonists that exist. Um, and it's really, really cool to see what people do. Some people use electronics on the bassoon. So they'll attach it, they'll use a mic and play into the mic and create like live things. It's really cool what people can do with this instrument. So just because it is a orchestral instrument doesn't mean that it just has to be that. There are so many things that the bassoon can do. It's such a versatile instrument. It has so many, Rain. It has so much range, it has so many colors, it has so much flexibility. So there are a lot of things that you can do with the bassoon and I love playing it for that reason. Um, so I will end this with one of my favorite bassoon excerpts of all time. It is a bassoon solo in Paul Ducas' The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, it has a similar flavor to uh, the uh, In the Hall of the Mountain King, which I played for you earlier, and that is really short, it's staccato. Um, it's a kind of soft, but I think this one is so fun because it moves all over the place. And when you just have this group of bassoons playing this under some really low strings, it creates a really cool effect. Um, you may know this from the Disney movie Fantasia. Um, it was one of the feature pieces in Fantasia. Uh, that's where I first saw it, um, where I first heard the song, and I really love it. And to this day, it's my favorite thing to play on the bassoon. Um, so I want to thank you all for spending this time with me. I love being able to tell you about my instrument and to tell you about why I love it, to show you how it works. And I hope to see you in some orchestras someday. So thank you all, and I hope you enjoy the Sorcerer's Apprentice by Paul Ducat. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.